Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons. So we managed to get ourselves some equipment upgrades from Thomcraft and Tinker's Construct last episode. And we also broke ground on the Valley Project, the site of our new base as we expand and we progress. Yeah, I'm actually really excited about this project, in fact I even started to work on it between episodes. The truth is though, we actually turned back time here and in fact we are in a backup. Yeah, so this is a point in time right after the end of last episode. To cut a long story short, I got too excited, I started digging. <laughs> and I realised we went into things without a plan. So this time, before we dig another block, I think I've established five key areas we have to keep in mind with the build as we move forward. And so the first consideration is the big shapes and the placement. Or in other words, where do we want the chemistry, the multi-blocks, the ore processing, applied energistics and storage? Thomcraft, blood magic, farms and mob farms, all of that and more will have to be figured out. And we also want to consider the chunk alignment which we've established here in the early part of the base. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to build square, we're not going to be building square. But at least for the multi-blocks it is an important consideration. After we figure out the placement, the next thing is the aesthetics and the blocks. So we need to ask ourselves, are we happy with the existing block palette of the base? And I think for many of the blocks, for example this concrete, probably the mist and the basalt, yeah these three are a winning combination right here. Perhaps though when we come to scale the build, we do have to add some extra variety though. And speaking of the scale, this also includes block collection. How do we consistently get thousands, tens of thousands? Hundreds of thousands of blocks? I don't know honestly, that's something we have to figure out. Necessary infrastructure. You guys all know what pack this is, right? And the infrastructure requirements mid and late game get pretty crazy. So yeah, we have to build to scale. And included in that is all of the pipes and wiring, of which there is going to be a substantial amount. So that has to factor into our designs. And the way I see it, there's basically three options. We can either go above the machines, below the machines, or behind the wall like what we have here. Any one of those or a combination of them all is probably going to work. Again, it's just something we have to figure out early. So once we have the big shapes in place, we've established the blocks and how we're going to collect those blocks. We have all of the necessary infrastructure and machines. The next thing is all of the aesthetic details. So this is all of the things which really take the build to the next level. A few of you guys suggested adding some nature in, which I'm all for. Whether that be leaves or water features, or trees, gardens. Stuff that really isn't actually necessary, but... I mean, we're going the extra mile with this, right? So we might as well. <laughs> or perhaps some more exotic materials, like, I don't know, the blood of the Enderman? <laughs> I mean, with all the damage they've done around here, I mean, we have to. Same with those creepers. And finally, we have to be able to evaluate and iterate. This one is an important one for me, at least, because in season one, I really disliked being in my old base. And we don't want to make the same mistake here again. So the answer to the question, are we happy with what we've built, has to be yes. Okay, at this point, with all of that being said, I think now we can start the digging process. So I started by removing some of the dirt and trees to make space within the valley. And once we had the initial area cleared, now it's time for some block counting. It's vital that we place things correctly the first time. Well, the second time. So I wanted to be mindful of where the chunk boundaries are and also line it up to our existing base. As well as mark out a few of the big shapes. So we start with a circle. And inside that circle we add another circle. And in the center circle we start to excavate with the builder. No wait, it's the filler. Yeah, it's a filler but we can excavate with it. Do you guys ever get to that point in a project where it's like, the point of no return? Well, we've crossed it, and then some. And I'm wondering to myself, uh, did I make the right decision here, again? Yeah, it's definitely too late now, we are committed at this point, we have to finish this.
All right, everyone, it's been uh, about a full day for me. And it might look like we're just digging holes for the sake of it, and, well, <laughs> it appears that we've got quite a mess in our hands here. Also, some chickens, which found their way down here somehow. That would be how. Just to show you what we've created right now, right now it's just a mob farm. It's pretty dangerous up here, actually. The miner managed to take out all the torches. And in fact, we even got a dungeon up there, which it doesn't look like it cleared on its own. Anyways, the digging. What exactly are we doing with all this space? <laughs> and it is a lot more space than I first uh, first had envisioned. We gotta keep moving these things. Yeah, exchanging all these blocks is gonna be a mission. We don't have exchanging gadgets in this either, so I think the Wand of Equal Trade is the only option. Unless there's some other way to exchange blocks, I'm not really sure. I suppose we could use the fillers to actually fill resources and just take away an extra layer of wall. But again, we don't really want things flat. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Hello, old friend. There's actually two old friends here. Yeah, these creepers. There's been a lot of these guys around as well. So what I want with this middle area is to make this a rocket silo. You guys seem to like that idea, and I really do enjoy that idea as well. And you know, I was thinking, since our goal is the tier 7 rocket, who knows if we're going to go further than that, but yeah, tier 7 rocket, that is the ultimate goal of this series. I think it would be so awesome if we could end it just by flying through the middle of the base. <laughs> There's a few issues I've uh, just thought about though, actually. And that is we're going to have wiring and machines on this side, mainly things like Thomcraft, which is down this hallway as we know. And this side, by the way, is also going to be cleared out, the same width as this section here. You might also notice a lot of waypoints here. I've been using these to try and mark out these landmarks, which is how we uh, specify the area for the filler. So I normally just create a waypoint and then go down below and use the waypoint beacon. And the mantle of the raven has saved me so many times. <laughs> I've fallen down this hole so many times, but luckily we don't take any fall damage. It looks like this section is almost finished. So yeah, to get around the issue of the wiring, how are we going to send wiring through this point if we have to be able to leave at least a 3x3? I think it's actually maybe 5x5 five five for the rocket maximum size. I mean, pretty much we have to go around, right? Somehow. So what I envision actually is a spire which goes through the middle. Big hollow tower, roughly the size of what I've marked out on the floor down there. And that should connect up to the valley over here, up around the level of that shelf. And then, yeah, you can imagine the spire will be around here. We want a walkway around that and then probably wiring underneath this pathway, which is going to remain throughout the middle of the valley. I think we'll probably end up widening this a few blocks, maybe five or seven blocks wide. And this will be our main main valley path. And that will extend to the right hand side, the left hand side and straight forward to Thumbcraft. And then, of course, all the land below us will be removed and we'll have our machine rooms on both sides of the valley. And then let's say we have like an entrance over here to ore processing, for example. We can have a bridge which crosses the gap and then probably like giant windows on the side. So I was thinking about some extra blocks that we could use for this build. But yeah, that is the main that is the main idea that we're going for here. <laughs> and it's very ambitious, I know. I've never taken on anything like this before. Honestly, obtaining the blocks is probably the most difficult part of this. That's the biggest unknown. A caramel slime. I've never seen these guys before. And they drop sugar, apparently. That's very fitting. Whenever we marked out this triangle and I moved it, I'm so glad I moved it at this point. Because now this all lines up with the center of the circle. And before, it was like seven blocks to the right. I don't know if you guys remember that. That would have put everything off center and we would have been really sad right now. <laughs> but yeah, I mentioned the terminals are going to be placed around here. Somewhere, somehow, we're going to have terminals here. And then an AE controller is going to sit around here. I think there'll be some sort of extended shelf on this level with all the ground below us removed. And then I was thinking having staircases on either side to take us down to the bottom of the valley or, you know, on the various levels of the valley. All of the super fine details I'm still trying to work out and it's a little hard to convey on video since it just takes so long to develop these ideas. But yeah, for the big shapes and the placement, I think we're almost there. The main thing is that we don't uh, step on our own toes and uh, we keep the reserved space that we need. I also moved around a few paths over here. This one used to be a little off center. I moved it to be exactly center with the center of the rocket silo. So I have a lot more digging to do this episode, but let's look at some of the aesthetics and the blocks. I have actually changed my mind on a few things. <laughs> this game never fails to amaze me, look at this. 
Fire zombie on a chicken. That chicken's having a great time down here. So I've been playing around in a creative test world, trying to get the new block palette nailed. However, before we look at that, actually, I want to have a solution for... <laughs> I want to have a solution for all of the lava down here. It's quite unfortunate the filler doesn't remove liquids. Yeah, this video is going to be a bit different to the way I normally film. It's going to be more of like a progress update. I want to get the majority of this dug out and also give you a sample of what we're going for long term. So I really want to build this spire today. And yeah, you might be able to tell the time because it's... We actually just hit year 8. Yeah, it's day 1 of year 8 in game. <laughs> 8 years in GTNH here. Wow, that's crazy. I mean, the world is on a server, but the server doesn't run 24-7. It's more like like 16 or 18 hours a day maybe i mean it's close enough i basically exist in this world right now <laughs> anyways the solution for the lava i'm told is the liquid drain wand focus another thumbcraft spell to add to our collection i'm told this can remove liquids so to make this iron tank and also the trash can for fluids we need the bc factory tank and this is also used in all the input hatches and output buses no <laughs> input hatches and output hatches for all of the greg tech multi blocks and we're down to our last four, so I'm going to start to batch craft, like, I don't know, a stack of these tanks at least. I've been making more obsidian in the rock breaker, which I don't think I actually mentioned. I moved from here quite a number of episodes back. It might, it might have actually been where this chemical reactor is. And of course, we're going to go with the efficient method of processing obsidian. We're not going to pulverize. Instead, we can alloy smelt with the ingot mold, and that gives us nine per piece of obsidian. Then we can pulverize and we get obsidian dust. Very good deal. Admittedly, the blast furnaces have also been off for quite a while. I've been making up some more steel, and we did just finish up a batch of stainless steel. Oh, that's not good. The fact that, that okay, the hopper is still empty. <laughs> we, uh, we do need to stay on top of this chest. In terms of resources, though, we're actually not doing too bad. We have 28 stacks of stainless, only 4 stacks of aluminium, 30 stacks of steel, among a lot of the steel plates and things in our regular crafting chests. So, you know, we're, at, we're actually not too bad. We could definitely be a lot better, though. Yeah, there's a lot more in here as well. Yeah, we do need to start using a lot of this stuff, though. We also need some iron rings, which we can do in the extruder. HV extruder. And I've been making up some more glass, which should be in the arc furnace. We also have a lot of these Z-tone tiles being made up in the assembler, which, of course, is how we get the mist blocks when we combine with mushroom. Mushroom is a bit of a funny... I'm really considering switching away from mist just because of how difficult mushroom is to obtain. So actually, a few days ago, I made a silk touch pickaxe. I made a fresh tinkers pickaxe, actually. And we had a silky jewel from a quest reward. I went out to the twilight forest to mine up some mycelium. And as it turns out, so long as you give the, the farming station fertilizer or bone meal, I don't think it, it doesn't seem to grow the mushrooms on its own. You have to provide it some sort of fertilizer, which complicates things quite a bit. But yeah, we can get a, a decent amount of mushrooms this way. And it's one mushroom to eight blocks, so it's really not such a bad deal. This fertilizer is kind of cheap as well. It's just some sand and appetite. And appetite I actually found bef before this episode started. There was a vein quite close to our base. I think it's this one here, yeah. I think in the end we are going to keep this mist block, but we're going to tone it down a little. N not everything is going to be mist. On the subject of blocks, there's also basalt, which is even more difficult to get than mushrooms, in fact. I think our only long-term solution for basalt is either bees or crops. And both of those are hundreds of hours of investment. <laughs> Which I'm not willing to go th through right now. Uh, at some point we will, but not right now. So we need a solution for this. I mean, the best way to get this right now is just to mine it in the world. And we are running out, so uh, yeah, we might have to find another solution for that also. Oh yeah, and when I say crops, I mean the IC2 crops. The ones that are needlessly complex. Look who we have here. We should capture this guy. <laughs> do I have any soul vials? We do. I don't remember if that's the jumping creeper, actually. It could be the one that jumps at you. If it's the gravity creeper, though, we have to be careful. Okay, let's just run at him. Grab him in the soul vial. Hope we don't lag. Okay, we got him. <laughs> oh, that was so close. We got him, though. We did get him. Oh, and it was the gravity creeper. That could have been such a close call. What are we going to do with this guy, though? So 
So as part of the recipe for the spell, we also need something called the Void Jar, which is quite a useful item on its own. It allows us to store Essentia and void the excess. Handy for some of those Essentials that you tend to get a lot of but have nowhere to store, especially without the use of Applied Energistics. So yeah, we ended up crafting a few of those and then gathered the rest of the materials for a Liquid Drain. Aha, so we got the spell, it costs us a tiny little bit of aqua to cast this. Yeah, 0.05 per cast. That's really not too bad. I'm also hoping it does actually work on lava here. Let's find out. Is it AoE? That's also another question I have. Okay, is it a channel spell or... Oh, it is a channel spell. We do have aqua in here, right? Yeah. Did I actually just craft this for nothing? Or am I not using it right? <laughs> Oh, come on, game. Maybe there's a keybind for it? We definitely have aqua, right? Oh yeah, and you see that in the top left? You, there's like a little arrow which points down, which seems to imply we're actually using aqua and nothing is happening. <laughs> I gotta find out how this works. Oh yeah, and all these, all these guardians, what are they called? Eldritch guardians? We have to find a solution for these guys. I don't know if this is gonna stay here. Apparently it can take us to some Thomecraft realm. Which sounds pretty awesome. I wonder if it's the same as the one in Divine Journey. Because that was a lot of fun to traverse. I think you guys said something about the Eldritch Eye that we got as a drop from one of those guys being the key. I'm not sure though, honestly. Oh, it works on water. Okay, that is cool. It's such a shame it doesn't work on lava though. <laughs> and now we have floating duckweed. Interesting, I wonder what other shenanigans you can do with this. Well, it was worth a try, right? We did craft some void jars which are going to be useful, but yeah, I'm going to be back to digging here and then we're going to take a look at some of these aesthetics and the blocks. I really do have to finish making this hole. Okay everyone, I need you to use your imagination for a little bit. Just imagine we've progressed far enough. <laughs> Just imagine we've progressed far enough to get our space equipment. So we do all of the chemistry, all of the required assembly process, we have our rocket in hand. Hold on, let me, wait, wait, hold on, let me get a rocket. <clears throat> yes, with the rocket in hand... <laughs> with the rocket in hand, we make our way towards the rocket silo. And approaching the rocket silo, we see this. Oh yeah, now this is a place to launch rockets from, right? Look at this place, this came out pretty awesome, I'm really happy with this. Yeah, I was really debating whether or not to show this in the creative world. I don't think though we can get this amount of polish on it today, so uh, I really want to give you guys a, a showcase of what we're going for. And as you can see, we do have some new introductions of blocks. We got a uh, corp. We also have the concrete block, this is the one we used to use on the floor. We have the introduction of stone bricks. Which of course is a bit cheaper than the mist. I did try to limit the, the amount of mist, but honestly this block is just so good. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh yeah, of course we introduced catwalks here, which is pretty cool. I, I've always wanted to play with this mod. And you can use the blowtorch actually to uh, affect them, or I guess open them. A few episodes back you guys also suggested colouring the different parts of the base. So well, that's exactly what we've done here, I really like that idea. So we got orange, we got red. We got green and we got blue. I tried to add some tinted glass on the front, which does change the colour quite a bit actually. And I think especially for the orange one, like the orange mist is not exactly an ideal colour. It doesn't look great in my opinion, but with the glass I think it adds to it. But yeah, I do really, really like this red block. This is ism, which is uh, not the same as the mist block, but this is a really cool colour of red. Actually, it's warm colour, but you know. <laughs> It's, a, it's an awesome colour, that's what it is. You might also notice these floating rings above here. This is going to go up to the surface on top of the valley. And we're going to space them like, I don't know, three or... I think we have them three blocks. Yeah, I really, I really like the idea of floating rings. And I want to introduce that into the rest of the valley as well. So obviously, I think it goes without saying, this is going to be placed in the ring that we... Or the circle we dug out today. The cylinder. And then you guys remember the bigger circle which we marked out? Well, I want that to be dug out to the level of, well, this part right here. So this part will be the lowest lowest section of our base where the rocket is. And then everything else will be dug out to this level right here. 
and then we'll somehow have some staircases on the inside here to take us down to these openings, which can bring us into the rocket silo. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. I told you I had a plan though. <laughs> you guys thought we were just digging holes for the sake of it. <laughs> which is kind of true, actually. It's still kind of true. What I actually want to do here is save this as a schematic. So we should be able to define the red point, which is where we're standing. I believe it's where you're standing is the first point that it saves. Actually, we don't need this in the schematic either. And then also down here is the second point. I think you just need the two opposite corners, red and the blue point. And then we can give it a name. We'll call it a silo V2. V1 was underdeveloped. I did actually make a first version of this and it was just nowhere near as good. So we're going to make this version two. Successfully saved, perfect. And by the way, there is key binds for all of this. You can find them in the options menu. And this should be our silo, right? Our completed rocket silo, perfect. And it also, if I'm not wrong, should give us a material list. Yeah, this is uh, this is quite, actually it's not too bad. It's only a thousand mist blocks. I mean, I say it's not that bad, but this is only a tiny fraction of what our valley is gonna be eventually. So now we should be able to take that schematic into our main world. And by the way, look at how this looks without night vision. It's pretty scary actually. But yeah, we should be able to import this silo v2 and it should fit perfectly, assuming I counted everything correctly. We might have to carve out a few, a few of the walls though. But most of the building I added on the inside of the circle and not necessarily on the outside. But again, this is all going to be uh, dug out anyway. It fits, awesome. There's a few blocks which need to be re uh, replaced, obviously. But yeah, check this out. This is going to look so awesome when it's done. And yeah, the top of those mist blocks up there is what I was talking about, that level. This is technically dug out a little bit too far. I did finish the digging, by the way, down here. Completely flawlessly, I might add. Absolutely nothing went wrong during the process. Nothing whatsoever. Everything went according to plan. Oh no, dang it, I forgot to remove the evidence here. You didn't see, uh, you didn't see anything. 84 levels disappeared just like that. <laughs> I also have a feeling that we, all of the basalt that we, yeah, all of the basalt we own is three stacks, not even two stacks, not even three stacks. Oh yeah, if you were wondering how we died, by the way, yeah. So the thing about those dungeons is you can't clear them unless you actually play the game. And it's a random game, whether it's Minesweeper or Simon Says. I think there might be one more as well. But if you fail, it explodes. It exploded. We survived because of the extra hearts we have. And then, yeah, we even managed to survive the fall all the way down there. And then one tiny little slime managed to finish us off. So definitely not my proudest moment right there. And we lost 84 levels. So not an amazing place to leave things. But I was also testing out another feature of this Schematica mod. There exists the printer option, which I think is like the Lightmatica mod. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with that for the newer versions of Minecraft. And if we chisel some basalt here, the very limited amount that we have. Honestly, I don't know how we're going to get more of this to finish this. It should automatically... Yeah, look at that. So long as we're in range, it should automatically place the blocks. I'm not sure how this is going to fare with the architecture blocks. You know, the ones that are on a 45 degree angle. Or is it 30 degrees? I'm not sure how it's going to place those, if at all. However, this should help us out tremendously when we go to build the rest of our base. I mean, we can effectively build it all in creative, which is what I might do. I, I'm not normally one for building in creative. A lot of people swear by it, and uh, I'm beginning to see the benefits of it, honestly. It's not something I've used a whole ton, though, in the past. However, I think this is also a good place to leave this episode. We don't have a ton of material, so I'm going to have to gather some more of that. I might finish off this build before next episode. But yeah, it's going to be nice to be able to switch things up here. We've got a lot of progression to quote unquote catch up on. <laughs> a lot of the stuff needs processed. I haven't been uh, keeping on top of that. Like basically all of my attention has went into this project right now. I hope that I, I hope this was a somewhat satisfactory start to this massive, massive project. Hello zombie. Goodbye zombie. He didn't make it. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for your patience on this episode. I really wanted to get some progress shown for you. Uh, <laughs> so you didn't think I was absolutely crazy. There's a lot of zombies here. In fact, we even got a spawner below us. You see, it? you see that? Yeah, plenty more to come here in New Horizons. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next episode. Take care, everyone. Oh, we didn't. We landed on the path.